Hi there, Dr. Verbeek here on behalf of Rescue and the Sunnybrook Center for Pre-Hospital Medicine to tell you a little bit about the ROCK ALPS trial, which is a trial in cardiac arrest that compares amiodarone, lidocaine, and placebo. We are doing this in participation with our EMS services, including Toronto EMS, Peel Region EMS, and Halton Region EMS, and I believe that Durham will be on board in the, in the near future. To tell you a little bit about the ALPS study design, we have a population of interest, an intervention, which is the drug intervention, and then an outcome. The population of interest are patients that have either persistent or recurrent ventricular fibrillation or pulses VT, who have vascular access established, and then are randomized to receive either one of amiodarone, lidocaine, or placebo. As paramedics administering the study drug, you will not know which of these three drugs or placebo the patient has received. The outcome is then survival to hospital discharge. This is the most important part of the trial because what we want to know is whether or not the use of either one of these two drugs or placebo is associated with an increase in survival. The way that we give the drugs is by using an ALPS kit. The ALPS kit is a fairly robust plastic package that contains three vials of medication. The medication will be exactly the same in all three vials, and it can either be amiodarone, lidocaine, or placebo, and they are labeled syringe 1A, 1B, and syringe 2. The study protocol is as follows. You have a cardiac arrest patient that's in persistent or recurrent VF or pulses VT. The first dose of drug should be given right after the patient has received their second shock, or in some cases, more. The first dose of drug in almost all your patients includes the administration of syringe 1A and 1B. There will be times where this will have to be given back-to-back -back with epi, depending on where you are in your protocol. In very small patients, those patients less than 45 kilograms, you should only give a syringe 1A because that is only half the dose of the drug. In terms of your shock count, you should include fire or pad shocks uh, that are given in your count, but the decision to deliver your study drug requires that you actually yourself see the patient in VF or VT prior to drug administration. So you've given the first dose of your study drug. Well, right after the next shock, you would then give the next dose of your study drug, which would be syringe number two, except for in those patients, again, that are small, less than 45 kilograms, where you've only been given syringe 1A to begin with. In this case, you would then give only syringe 1B as your study drug, and you would never end up giving syringe number two. I don't know if you noticed, but in the picture that I showed you about the ALPS study kit, there was actually, uh, with the drug vials, three little plastic um, packages which actually will include what we call the clear link syringe adapter. This is actually a pretty important part of your protocol because each time you administer an ALPS drug you have to use this clear link adapter which is really just an adapter to link your study syringe to your IV port. This is an important safety issue because there have been rare reports of breakage of the hub of, your, of the glass study syringe, which then can end up blocking your IV port, which means you can't give any further drug. So who exactly should get the ALPS drug? Well, all patients have to be at least 18 years of age. They have to have experienced a non-traumatic out-of-hospital cardiac arrest, which by the way can include hanging and electrocution patients unless they have had severe trauma. We define persistent or recurrent VF or VT as having received at least two or more shocks. And this can apply to the following situations. Either the patient is in VF or VT on EMS arrival, VF VT that is still present after fire or pad is delivered at least two shocks, VF or VT arrest occurring after EMS arrival, that would be an arrest that you witness, or VFVT that occurs late during resuscitation where the initial rhythm may either be asystole or some other non-shockable rhythm. There are a number of patients who actually should not get the ALPS drug. 
And those would include patients who have already received open label, that means regularly stocked IV amiodarone or lidocaine. Patients who you find out have a known hypersensitivity or allergy to either amiodarone or lidocaine. Or patients who belong to what we define as protected populations. And that would include prisoners, children, and obviously pregnant patients. Lastly, if the patient was shocked two times prior to your arrival by either fire or pad and is at the moment in a non-shockable rhythm, the patient shouldn't receive an ELP study drug unless they subsequently redevelop VF or VT. There are a number of special situations which paramedics have asked us about. So the first one is, well, what if I give syringes 1A and 1B I got a return of spontaneous circulation, but now VF or pulses VT has later recurred. Well, in that case, you deliver your next shock and then immediately give syringe number two. Well, what if the patient is small? What if they weigh less than 45 kilograms? Well, in that case, the first uh, dose of your study drug would be syringe 1A. The second dose would be syringe 1B, and you would end up never using syringe number two. Well, what should I do if VF or VT persists or recurs after I give two doses of this study drug? So I've maxed out on, on the drug that I can give. Well, in that case, continue usual care. Definitely do not give any open label amiodarone or lidocaine. That is not permitted in this particular trial. As well, don't patch to the base hospital physician for open label amiodarone. In fact, all base hospital physicians are being notified that uh, they should refuse such requests. Okay, well, what if I do if one of the syringes is broken or gets broken before or while I'm using it? Well, those patients should be excluded from the ALPS trial. They should be withdrawn immediately. You then revert to your routine protocols, give open label amiodarone if needed, but above all, do not open another uh, drug study kit, even if one is available from another paramedic crew. Keep all the study kit materials, including the broken syringes, kind of repackage them back into the uh, plastic uh, study kit container, and notify your superintendent who will pick it up and return it to rescue. There are a number of paramedic responsibilities in terms of, I guess, the administrative part of the trial. These are equally important to your clinical care. And they include the documentation of the ELPS kit and tracking it on the daily narcotic tracking sheet where you would include the drug count, any breakage that you observe, and the run number. This is just like uh, you would do when recording the use of narcotics. Make sure you document the ELPS kit number on your EPCR so we can correlate that um, back at the rescue office. And once you've used an ELP study kit, restock the kit by contacting your supervisor after the call and asking for a replacement. Once you get to the emergency department that you've treated under the ELPS protocol, make sure that you notify the ED that the patient may have received either amiodarone or lidocaine or placebo and leave the notification sheet with the emergency department that explains the nature of the trial. All emergency departments have been notified of the ELPS trial. However, it is possible that from time to time they uh, will forget this, and therefore the notification sheet that we have for you to provide to the emergency department is extremely important. There are three more key points that I just want to cover before we complete this presentation. During care of the patient, once you've established good CPR and good ventilations, prioritize vascular access. Try to get that IV started as soon as possible because we believe that early administration of the ELPS drug is what's going to be important in increasing survival to discharge from the hospital. By prioritizing vascular access, you will expedite the ELPS drug administration for persistent VF or VT. Make sure on your Zoll that you timestamp each time you administer an ELPS drug. And if you could on your EPCR, record the shock number that precedes or follows each dose of the ELPS drug. If you need further information about the study, please contact the St. Michael's Rescue Office, being rescue, or contact Scott Gorslin at the base hospital. 
Before we close, I just want to point out a very important Toronto EMS paramedic legacy. And this has to do with paramedics who have been practicing as ACPs on the road for 10 years or more, who likely participated in the original ALIVE trial, which was the original trial that showed that there could be some hope for the administration of lidocaine in out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. Without this trial, we would not be in the position of being able to now, in fact, implement the, uh, the ALPS trial. And so it's because of the great work that has been done in the past by Toronto EMS paramedics that we are currently in the position of being able to do a trial that is not only being run in Toronto and our region, but is being done across North America involving tens of thousands of patients and thousands of paramedics all doing the same trial. Thanks again. Enjoy the trial. I look forward to working with you over the next couple of years in getting the work done. And hopefully we'll, uh, we'll find that amiodarone or lidocaine is truly beneficial in cardiac arrest and we can even save more lives uh, in the future.